Week 3, Problem 3. Two long parallel wires carrying currents of 33 amps and 16 amps in, a dire in opposite directions. Is it figure below? Check. Which of the following statements must be true? More than one statement may be correct. Okay. Okay. So, start off by writing a formula for a magnetic field due to a current carrying wire. So I'm going to call this um, B. I'm going to use this little L shape for line because it's kind of like a line, a line of wire. And we're going to have mu naught I over 4 pi R. Oh, pi. Darn you, pi. Oh, R. And we're going to multiply this by cosine. I can do better than that. There we go. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There. Oh. Cosine of theta. Oh. Kind of cheat a little bit here. Bam. There we go. Plus. We'll do one. We'll do two here. Make a little bracket. All right. So the idea here is if you have a wire like this and a point here like this, you have an angle. <laughs> that is a terrible angle. Theta 1. Theta 1. You have another angle. Oop. Theta 2. And sometimes you'll see it where they'll draw a theta like this, and instead of having plus, they'll have, uh, they'll have negative or minus cosine theta 2, or they'll sometimes use this angle here and call it sine. It doesn't matter. As long as you draw the picture the same way every time, at least for you, you'll be good. This is the one I like to use. Uh, if for some reason they give you this angle instead, you can convert it over to this angle, doing a 180 minus 90 minus that angle, but um, however you decide to do it is fine. And when you have an infinite wire, what you get is zero for both thetas, because it's at infinity, and you get 1 plus 1 times 2, and you get, for an infinite wire, you got mu naught i over 2 pi r. All right? And now, to find the direction of the magnetic field, we use uh, another right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule we use for this is you put your, you lay your thumb along the wire, and you wrap your fingers around the wire. And the direction you wrap your fingers will be the direction of the magnetic field. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the two uh, wires and see uh, what statements here have to be true. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing the magnetic fields in various regions. So I'm going to start by looking at wire one. So for wire one here, we're going to have a magnetic field that wraps around this direction. So let's see. Hop. Hop. Yep, like this. Okay. So at this point right here, this is going to be this section will be 1, this section will be 2. So over here, we're going to have it going into the board. We're going to have it going into the board. And this is for uh, wire 1. So imagine a really big circle right there. And then for here, it's going to be coming out of the board. I hmm. wonder why I can do X's, but I can't do the silly little dots. All right, now for, other cir for the other wire, we have wire going, current going the other direction. We have our hand around. And for up here, we're going to get it going into the board. Over here, we're going to have it coming out of the board. And up here, we're also going to have it going into the board. Okay? So, and we know that I1 is stronger than I2. So, in region 1, the magnetic field, which of the following must be true? Okay. That can be true but must be true. Uh, in region one, the magnetic field is into the page and is never zero. All right, so I1 is going to dominate uh, region one. The reason because that is the two factors that matter is the distance and the current. 
So I1 is both closer to region 1 and has a stronger current. So I1, or wire number 1, will always dominate region 1. And it's going to have a current coming out of the page. Because, yep, right hand rule, going to come out of the page at the top. So in region 1, the magnetic field is into the page. No, that is false. That is, that can, it's not always true, but it's always false which is specifically not always true. All right, in region two, the region is, the field is into the page, true, and can be zero. Okay, it's into the page, but it cannot be zero because I1 is producing some field, I3 is producing some field. They're both in uh, into the page, and um, so, we have a positive number greater than zero, and we add another number that's also greater than zero, you aren't going to get zero. That's, that's part of life. So no, the second part, also false. In region three, it is possible for the field to be zero. Region three is, okay, so yes, that's going to be true. So we have the two factors that determine field strength is going to be the current and the distance. So wire two is going to be closer to region three, but I one has a stronger current. So depending on where you are in region three, either wire one or wire two can dominate. And when none of them dominate, i.e. they're both specifically have the same influence, then the field will be zero. And you see how these are opposite? This is uh, into the page, this is out of the page. Therefore, when you add them together, you have a possibility of them canceling. So yes, this guy can be true. In region one, magnetic field is out of the page and is never zero. Region one, magnetic field is out of the page and is never zero. True, because uh, wire one is going to dominate, therefore, and wire one produces some magnetic field in region one. Therefore, there will never be zero. Uh, wire two is just too weak and too far away to cancel out the effects from wire one. Therefore, it will never be zero and the field is out of the page. So yes, you, fourth choice, are also a winner. There are no points where the field, where the field is zero. No, there is, there, um, there are points where the field is zero, and that's gonna be some point over here in region three. Right, here. right there, I'm gonna say that's the area. So there is, there can be a point where the um, field is zero. Um, and I mean, if we said yes to this guy, we're going to have to at least say no to this guy. So, these are the two. Those are the th two that I would choose. Alright, got it? Perfect. On to number four.